until recently I had only played all fear games except the first one, the original one. So I decided that I would like to play that one just so I can tie up the story and to get a better feel for the whole lore of the game since I am somewhat of a fan of the franchise. As I booted up fear 1 I realized that this is a very old game and was curious if it's gonna be able to run well on a system that is now modern and I found out that thanks to GOG the game runs really well and it actually scales up. You can even play it on ultra wide with very high settings. However, the disadvantage is that the game is very heavy. I mean, a game this old still sucks my system dry. I have a 1080 amp extreme from Zotac and, and it still ran at only about 45 to 46 frames per second, which seems very, very low. You'd think that this game would run on a rig such as mine with 250 frames. But okay, that's all right. 45 frames were absolutely acceptable, so I went through with it. And I'm going to start, as always, with the negatives. This game maybe was scary back in the day when graphics were this bad but nowadays it's not scary at all it just didn't work for me at all I'm not easily scared so I'll give it that the sound of the game sucks and reminds me of games such as sin or even the first half-life the story of the game is really bad as I started playing it I listened to the game I listened to the information it was giving me and tried to assemble the story and I found out that it was presented in a really stupid manner and just sounded as generic as any action movie of the 90s so stupid story and top that with a silent protagonist my favorite favorite thing you know guys I absolutely hate silent protagonists I think it's lazy I think it's stupid and it kills the immersion completely if the developer expects me to project myself onto the protagonist it doesn't work because he doesn't talk he just does stuff he's told and it just doesn't feel right he's not a peon he's a super soldier he should also have a super character if you know what I mean the game felt very repetitive back in the day those games were very long remember half-life 1 this is not an exception when it comes to these things the game is very long and through that it becomes very repetitive because you essentially just go from one level to the next shoot the same enemies and continue and rinse and repeat over and over for a super long time especially because your character has bullet time skills he can actually slow time and it feels like it's not strong enough though he should be faster than that he should be much faster than the enemies during this it still didn't feel powerful enough for me I just like when you give me a superpower give me one that destroys the enemies and while this one is effective it's just been done much better in other games Games. take Max Payne for example. There are also things that are very unusual for this genre. It's supposed to take itself seriously. It's supposed to be scary. And then you have a comic relief character who is in this game and you kind of chase him for several levels. You have the whole stupid weird comic music when he's there. And this is so not fitting this game. I was shocked when I saw it. Not only is the game too long, not only does it have comic relief, but it has a shitty ending on top of everything. So much was wrong with the story and all in all with the game. It wasn't all bad, but I mean the good Good stuff is more because I am very lenient towards the game being that old. But let's start with it. There is some stealth in the game and I'm a fan of stealth even if it's limited like this one. I'd still appreciate it. The resolution as I've mentioned is impressive but that's mostly GOG's work. I'm sure back in the day would have not supported that. The gunplay is overall not bad. I mean I've seen much better but I've seen worse too so that's absolutely okay. You can read messages and listen to radio conversations which explains some minor story details that the story otherwise does not give you so that was pretty nice as well I like these kind of things it looks great for its age overall and the levels offer multiple paths which to traverse however all these paths are tubes the whole level is a giant tube that spreads out and then reconnects so even if you take the left side or the right side the differences are minor and one thing that I really like is that heads sometimes do explode now once you beat the game you get something of a DLC called the Perseus mandate which lets you control a soldier but still explains the story so I'll start with the negatives there the thing that pissed me off back then there were ads in the game and they still are in there for Dell PCs you would see all these Dell PCs lying around and I just thought to myself what were they thinking the guy that you play as is pretty much a normal soldier yet he can use bullet time which has no logic point man is Alma's child he's a super soldier this guy is a normal soldier yet he has this superpower as well the new guy that you play in this DLC is also a silent protagonist nobody talks that would be like the dream army never talk back never think just follow orders then we have the same voice actor voicing two NPCs and in some cases both NPCs would sit next to each other and talk to you it's like the same guy talks on your left and then voiced by the same actor the guy on your right also talks to you like a minute later maximum hang on what's this put it on the main screen give me the encryption codes and this will stop I can't do that. 
I just can't. I can't. You mean you won't, Mr. Bristol. You ran Perseus for Harlan Wade. That was just ridiculous. I mean, I understand saving, but that goes too far. We have another shot down helicopter. This is a recurring theme in this game, it would appear. You are in a helicopter, it gets shot down. You look at a helicopter, it gets shot down. These people should just not use helicopters anymore. And then the good things about the DLC is that it has good combat AI. The guns that you can find are modified guns from the normal game, which is pretty cool because they get a new spin. And this mode actually explains a lot more about the story. You also have a few challenge levels which are unlocked, but you pass them all within half an hour but it is a nice bonus altogether so yes this is fear one is it a great game no at this point i'm actually scratching my head and wondering how this sold enough to merit sequels but i'm glad it did because the games afterwards are much better and i guess all beginnings are humble and this one is very much so thank you for watching and have a great day